Hello everybody, hi, welcome, and thank you so much for being here. We are going to do a timeless and collective reading. So whenever this reading finds its way to you is the right time. But just remember, it's a general reading. So see which signs and symbols resonate for you to help bring you some kind of clarity to whatever you're wondering about, concerned, confused about. This could just broaden your perspective and show you something in a totally different light or it could narrow your focus and show you something you could be missing, but in the end, you trust yourself. Trust yourself. You have that inner divine guidance inside of you. The answers come from within. And in the end, try to make balanced decisions between your logic and intuition. So you make sound decisions that are based in love 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 for the highest group and greatest good of everybody so we are all uplifted in love and i brought some interesting decks out today so let's begin with something a little bit out of this world <laughs> this is called the mystic martian oracle never used it in a reading so let's see what kind of out of this world energy comes through for the collective let's see what god source holy spirit christ consciousness our higher selves angels and energies of love have for the highest and the greatest good of all clarity for the collective through lately guys we have the venusians coming through this couple i like the blue hair and the pink hair they just look really into one another so the energy coming through that's a little out of this world a little bit unusual special different is number 24 so that it's a that's a six it reminds me of the lovers um romance soulmates and empathy so really trying to see something in the other person's perspective hearing somebody like really hearing them um i'm getting listening so if someone needs to speak it's it's not just i feel like this is not just a normal conversation it's really being heard so maybe you feel like you really need to be heard uh, empathy, soulmates, divine connection, just somehow knowing you are meant to be together, maybe for a little while, maybe for evs, but I do feel like this is some kind of connection coming through where you feel like you've already been there. So it could be somebody from the past, or maybe something is familiar, but I'm I'm getting more like past lives, or perhaps you had lives on another planet like Venus. Um, all right, let's continue. I'm gonna show you what's at the bottom of the deck. We got a, a blue alien, it's called the blue avians. It looks like a blue bird. So maybe you see blue birds or blue jays or you have a blue parrot or the color blue. Um, philosophy, releasing karma and mysticism. So it's like, I don't know, I get very mysterious energy with this, but also intellect. So, uh, releasing karma. This is releasing past baggages. This is really like finishing a chapter. It could be releasing karma from in the past or maybe lifetimes ago. Um, I feel released with this. I mean, it's a bird, so it makes me think of flying free, flying, um, 
like above a situation, you can finally see the bigger picture and philosophy. It makes me think of really deep thought. So maybe somebody is in deep thought. Um, it makes me think of the Philosopher's Stone. Um, or like the Cosmic Egg, you know? It's a blue avian, so maybe the Cosmic Egg is something you guys are studying, or the Philosopher's Stone, and I don't know why that just took me to the Rosetta Stone. So maybe it's something with languages, um, uh, interpretation, maybe some of you are able to speak different languages and you, something's coming through where you can translate something, or maybe you're connecting to somebody else that speaks a different language. You can kind of, I mean, learn from them. Come on up, come on up. Good girl. Okay, let's get more clarity on Blue Avians. It's a li there's, a, there's a little bit of a Star Trek thing going on here too. So maybe some of you are into Star Trek or Star War Wars since we're, we're doing these out of the world energies. Oh, I have a, I actually have a neon that's a spaceship. I should have had that one behind me today, but another time, another video, another reading. All right, and the Venusians. So Venus energy, it makes me think of Venus, the divine feminine, but here it's a divine masculine and feminine. I just see the hearts and there's Cupid here and it looks like there's this really interesting sun. Hmm. It's almost like a sunflower. So I'm getting a lot of, I know there's blue on here, but I see the pink and the yellow energy. Um, speaking of energy, I feel like I should start showing you the random stones that I pull. So today I did pull this beautiful amethyst ball it looks like a little planet and chalcedony this one is actually it actually has a hole it's made to be like a really big ass necklace or something but the hole is very tiny and it's a very big stone so i've never made anything with it but i feel like it's beautiful and i i actually brought something really unusual this is a red ghost Quartz. I love this stone. It's so cool. I hope you can see it on video. So it's a beautiful quartz point, but inside, you can see it good on that side, there's this red crystal inside. So it's like this red stone was growing and then just stopped, and this beautiful quartz at some point billions of years ago just grew on top of it. And there, so it's almost like a red heart. So maybe this does involve your heart or something inside because it makes me think of like, I don't know, love and intelligence. I feel like crystals are like able to be programmed. So maybe it has something to do with a program or something you see on TV or maybe something you're doing online. Hmm. Let's do, let's get a, let's come back down to earth, down to earth. I have the sign of the times Oracle. So let's, Oh, I actually, I actually have the romance oracle too. So maybe, maybe since we started with that romance card, we need to pull that baby out. So let's start with a little earth energy sign of the times, a daily general energy for the collective clarity on Venusians and blue avians. I just saw like a falcon, like somebody with a big glove and a gigantic bird landing. So, oh, I mean, falcons just seem like powerful and a little, a little bit scary. Like you need that big ass glove with their talons and their beaks. So maybe some of you are dealing with like some really wild, wild energy. Um, I met a, I met a, he was a boy. I mean, he wasn't a boy. He was very young though. I would say like late teens, early twenties. And he did falconry. Um, it was so interesting. So maybe some of you do work with falcons or big parrots or crows or some kind of birds. Let's get a card for the collective. Oh, 
Flamingo. So we have some birds. Maybe you have flamingos. <laughs> That's so awesome if you have flamingos near you. Now I just see those like plastic flamingos in the yard. So I mean, this does feel like fun. It feels like fun. I like the pink energy. So we're getting a lot of pink here. And oh, I mean, I feel like when I see the flamingo, it's also nourishment. It's what you feed into your energy, into your system, into your body. Maybe it's actually food that gives you nourishment. So pay attention to your diet, what you're eating. But I feel like this is just fun. It's also a two. So we have that like a like a balanced energy, a partnership with the two. Um, fun. Maybe you just need to have some fun today. Have some fun with your honey or just have that joyful energy about you so you attract the right things into your world. What's at the bottom? Butterfly. So metam metamorphosis. 22. There's another two and a two. That's a lot of twos. It's funny because there's a, a two and a two and a two. And then the 24 is kind of like a two and a two and a two. Um, 22 is a four. It brings stability. So there's something really changing. You are starting to fly. You are breaking out of your cocoon. So it could be just getting out a little bit more, getting out out of the house, um, you know, having more social time with some friends or a buddy or your lover or, uh, I mean, even with your, just yourself. It's starting to feel like you're I'm getting like expressing yourself a little bit different. I know this is a butterfly, but I just saw, <laughs> I just saw a big ass peacock. So maybe some of you are peacocking or maybe because you're this beautiful butterfly, somebody's like peacocking a little bit around you. Um, the peacock also makes me think of Archangel Gabriel, because if you look in, um, ancient and like a lot of old uh, artistic depictions of Gabriel, he always has wings that look like peacock feathers. And I think he was known as the peacock angel. He was also, he's also like the voice, the messenger of God. Um, you know, it was Gabriel that showed up at the Annunciation speaking to Mary about the divine conception. So uh, maybe there's a birth. Maybe some of you are um, starting a family or um, it could even be that the person you meet or you're like dealing with right now, having a relationship has some children or you already do and it's blending families. It could also be adoption. I'm also getting like furry babies, perhaps some feather babies. So maybe even taking care of animals together. Um, let's continue. Since I talked about the romance angels, let's pull a few cards. We're gonna pull two. Let's see what kind of energy comes through in the love department. Clarity for the collective on having some fun. The flamingo, Venusian energy of romance, divine partnership, metamorphosis. Um, I just heard spiritual wings. So maybe you feel like you've already had these wings for a while, but your energy is actually helping somebody else break out of their cocoon or it could go vice versa. Maybe these are things you never even looked at before and you just have this new sensation that you should like, I'm like diving into metaphysics, um, alchemy even. Let's see. Uh, or that's an inspiration you're getting from somebody else and you're growing like these spiritual wings somehow. All right, let's get two cards from the romance department for the collective. Let's see. All right, deception is coming through. So there is a mask in this situation. 
So either somebody is not showing those beautiful, colorful wings that they have, or they're, I'm getting someone's like not wanting to come out of the cocoon. Um, maybe somebody isn't showing you their true feelings, how they really feel, or you feel a little bit of a, oh, I'm getting like almost like a, I don't want to say scaredy, scaredy cat. Like you're almost afraid to show your true feelings or how you really feel about some someone or something. Um, here the little cherub is actually like sneaking up behind this one person and like undoing their mask. So there's some kind of divine energy that's going to come through and either take that person's mask off or maybe that's you allowing somebody to actually take that mask off. Hmm. I'm getting like a surprising energy now. Like, oh, it's even better. Or, oh, wow, I didn't know that about you. So maybe somebody's finding out that you are really spiritual and that, you know, you always just talked about work or talked about going to the store or normal stuff. And maybe that opens up like a Pandora's box of new conversations for you. It could just be also because this card came through guys. It could be that you do need to pay attention to some red flags. You know, when you see that somebody might not be telling you the truth or maybe true, uh, you know, something by omission, um, pay attention to your gut, how you really feel, have discernment on that situation. It doesn't mean the truth won't come out or that you won't figure something out or have a conversation. Um, I see the extra fabric over this person's gut. So I feel like you do need to pay attention to your gut, but this person is showing part of their true self because they don't have a shirt on. So there is something that is being revealed. Maybe just not everything yet. Let's get clarity on deception for the collective. Worth waiting for. All right, so maybe something just, I see like a stage curtain now. So it's on, I, I see like a stage and it's, it's almost like the curtain is going up and you only see that person's feet. I know this is a really weird vision, but you're like, I don't know, should I leave the show? This is a really weird show. I didn't come here to look at somebody's bare feet. <laughs> and then I don't know. I feel like maybe that's where, you know, like maybe there's a really good show coming through. So don't leave in the preview because there's something that hasn't been revealed yet. I feel like when that curtain comes up, there's this beautiful like scene and I don't know, like dancing and energy and something that's going to happen for you to see. So it's worth waiting for. It's kind of like, oh, it's kind of like when you watch a movie. I don't know why this is what I'm thinking of, but I'm thinking of, it was one of the newer, it's probably old now, like 20 years, but the newer versions of a Midsummer Night's Dream. And it was the one with, I think Callista Flockhart was in it and Michelle Pfeiffer, if I got the if I got that right. And I can just remember actually I guess I just got another one. I got Titus too with Anthony Hopkins. I'm getting a lot of Shakespeare all of a sudden. But I do feel like with both of those movies, because that's what I'm referring to, not really the the stage, but um it took like a good half an hour to get through it to kind of get the characters and the setup of what was going on to really get into the show. And then once it got a roll in and once like the depth started being revealed, it got really good and enticing. It got amazing. So maybe you just, you really do have to wait for something. Maybe somebody has you on hold on a pause, you know, in a ghosting situation, but I feel like there's something going on. I see a theater again. Like it's like the big orchestra. It's like the angels in the universe are actually setting situations up for you so it can come through in the best timing so that it is the right energy coming through. Maybe somebody do, does need to learn to spread their spiritual wings and that's what's happening. And when that comes through, that's when this connection is going to be able to like 
really fly. But divine timing is at work in your love life. You have to trust this. So in the meantime, if you're in the waiting game, what can you do with yourself that makes you happy? That makes you expressive and feel like you have something you are proud of. What is that for you? If you can't think of it, maybe you need to jot down some of ideas or think about like little repeating things that come through. You should try this. Hmm, I should try that class or I should learn this. Whatever that is for you. You know, I pick up your guitar. You know, pick up those paint brushes. Whatever it is. Like I just see like now you um, working with plants. Like pottery, you know, putting your hands in the dirt and trying to grow something. Um, at the bottom, you have attraction. Um, but I, I keep looking at this card here. I feel like the angels are sort of covering themselves up. It's like they have a surprise for you, but you can't quite see it yet. Um, it does look a little like a cocoon. I feel like... Mm, Okay, I'm going back, I'm, I'm balancing all around here. I, I'm going back to that, like, you need to, you, you need to, like, get into something a little bit before it becomes good. And now I just went a totally different direction. And I went to Shit's Creek. And that was one of those shows. The, the first couple episodes, it was like, oh, I don't know if I like this show. I don't know. And then you just like really start to understand the characters and all of a sudden it's like really good. So maybe it's something like that, like a sitcom. Um, I do feel like you have to wait, you know, maybe really see the real humor in somebody first before you get how funny they are. Maybe it's not going to come right off the bat. I feel like for some of you it is. It is an instant attraction. But maybe you just have to know more about their lives. You know, maybe that person's situation, where they're coming from, what they're dealing with now, or what they're dealing with now that you don't know about yet, but you will learn about. Um, you attract romantic love by enjoying the moment fully. That's not coming up. That's right now. That's when you you know, finish this video or what you're doing right now while you're watching the video. I don't know. You could be doing the dishes. You could be driving the car. You could be who knows how you're listening to this. Um, if you're driving a car, though, try to just listen to it. Don't watch me. Um, you attract love by enjoying this moment fully. She's just smelling the roses. I mean, it's like whatever she's doing, there's this rosiness in her cheeks. So... Um, it's like a glow. And when you, when you just, I mean, it could be just a moment recognizing the beauty around you, petting your dog, you know, petting your cat, having fun with your kids. Um, I'm, I'm seeing somebody almost like get dressed up in their house and perhaps you have nowhere to go. And it's just getting yourself dressed up, maybe taking some beautiful pictures of yourself just because you feel good. Why not? Um, doing your hair or shaving your hair or trimming the old man beard. I just see a guy now with the fancy, like <laughs> the fancy mustache. So maybe you have a fancy mustache. Um, it's just enjoying your moment, whatever you need to do. This energy into you is going to be what attracts this situation. So I just heard like deceiving yourself with this, with this deception card. So maybe it's, it's you. You're not seeing the beauty in something or you're, you're telling yourself something isn't going to happen or your self doubt or self sabotage just Maybe you're getting in your own way, getting too wrapped up in your head and maybe it's just coming out of your head and into the moments. I just heard Billy Ocean out of my dreams and into my car. That one. So maybe you maybe you need to get into your car. Like <laughs> I really hear that song now. So maybe something is just in fantasy land and it's, you know, Maybe something's coming out of fantasy land. Uh, 
I see a road trip now or somebody coming along with you. You can learn a lot about a person by how they are on a good old road, road trip. <laughs> you know, sometimes you can be really close to somebody or they can be in your family, but you get on the road and somebody has to pee and you have to pull over and, you know, get gas or you get lost or there's a roadblock or everybody has a choice of music or whatever. Like you can either have a grand old time with somebody or it could be like a dud, you know, like it could be like a, oh, like exhausting road trip. So maybe you learn a lot about somebody on the road when you get in a car with them. Um, I just see singing now in a car. So like, like, singing maybe somebody like has interesting taste of music like you didn't realize they could like groove or it's how they move I i'm seeing a road trip guys so maybe it's planning a road trip or just getting in the car getting on a bus taking a walk in your city um you know having like a random adventure uh now i'm going back to a treasure hunt i think i got that in another in another video so, or another reading. So maybe it's, um, maybe you're planning a treasure hunt for somebody. Ooh, fun, fun. That's cool. That feels like it could be a good party or a really personal like outing. Um, like somebody has clues and they have to find them. And, and at the end there's like, I don't know, a fancy dinner or a hot air balloon ride or who knows that could go anywhere but that sounds like fun so maybe that's an idea for somebody it's gonna take a little creativity and some planning but I feel like oh no that could be very special for somebody cool all right I like when weird stuff comes through all right speaking of weird let's go to the surrealist tarot there is so much weird imagery in this tarot that I don't know. I don't really feel like it's the traditional meanings that come through. So let's just see what we get, what the collective needs to know for the highest and greatest good of all. I hear one card and that sounds right because I feel like there's a lot of imagery in one card and then we'll We'll play it by ear with that. Maybe some of you are playing something by ear. Um, you don't know, I just saw like somebody sitting at the piano and looking at like Mozart or something very complicated and being able to like play something perfectly. And then I wanna say a different type, but not, maybe not of musician that maybe you can't read music at all but you hear something and you're able to mimic or repeat or even make it better. So maybe some of you are scared to play music because you don't read music. There's also many apps now that we can learn things online pretty fast, like apps on your phone, learn a little bit every day. But um, I'm getting that some of you may not even know how talented you could be if you just give it a go. So some of you are so at least one person out there has a really good ear. Um, and I feel like this talent is what wants to come out of the cocoon. And maybe you just need to, I don't know, maybe get a, get a guitar or a ukulele. Um, I just saw a flute. <laughs> so maybe you have to pick up the flute. Um, now I just see like the Pied, was it the Pied Piper? Is that the one that has all the, what is it? The little like critters that follow him. So it's almost like playing this flute. You're going to get a following or playing whatever it is. You're going to find like a following, um, like fans. I hear fan club. <laughs> huh? A side note. Here we are with the note again. So notes, music for some of you. One card for the collective. Thank you. Ten of Pentacles. Well, I mean, this looks the first thing I think I see is like a graduation cap, but it also looks like a chessboard. So somebody is like playing the long like strategy game here. Um, the Ten of Pentacles is legacy. 
It's legacy, guys. This is whatever relationship is coming through you're doing for yourself and following this fun, expressive energy that's attracting the right things to you is it's bringing you the Ten of Pentacles. That's generations passing something on to further like future generations. Uh, what did I? Oh, I wish I remembered the quote. I read something. It's like art is what expresses like legacy in space and music is what expresses the legacy into time. I think I have that a little bit off, but it's something like that. So maybe it's art or expression, but 10 of pentacles is, it's also money. It's value. It's energy into your surroundings that builds your home, your family. Um, I hear profit, something that's profitable. Um, it's monetary gain, but it's it's not just about the money. It's not just about the money because you can have all the stuff in the world. You can have the biggest home, you know, people at your service doing your chores for you or being able to buy the big fancy car, but that doesn't bring happiness. The happiness, the joy, it starts within you. It's when you're able to play or do things in your world that you love. It's being with the people that you really love. It's that community. It's that interaction. It's those people that make it special. It's those moments that you remember, you know, at the end of our lives. It's all of those moments that mean something. So we can build this big legacy and this big beautiful home and that's wonderful. It brings comfort and you know satisfaction but it's not everything. I'm, that's what I'm getting with this. So maybe somebody's changing how they perceive what wealth is. Sometimes wealth is freedom. I mean th think of all the celebrities that are just bombarded with photographs and people in their business and all this pressure to get things done and then I you know I, I'm sure some of them find peace and are able to you know live in locations where they I just see like Colorado or Wyoming now but in locations where they feel like they can be themselves they can go to the local bar or the local restaurant and they're not going to be like bombarded maybe people will recognize them but I'm feeling like that weird energy like Sometimes success brings that spotlight. So there's a balance that needs to happen. Maybe some people want that spotlight or they think they do until they get it. And then maybe it's like a, so I'm getting that <sighs> this wealth is experiences. Every day, little moments, vacations, being with that person that really, I hear makes you sing, makes your heart glow. Um, family, friends, chosen family, co-workers, um, putting your time into those moments. That's what I'm getting with this, even though there's a lot of like chest pieces here. The first thing I see is the castle and the knight. The queen is down here, the pawn. What is this? Did I even show you this card? What is this? <laughs> I don't know, but the first thing I see when I look at this card, it looks like he's sitting on the, he looks like he's sitting on the toilet. I don't think that's what it's supposed to be. It looks, it does. It looks like a flying toilet. Um, maybe some of you are plumbers. There's uh, vans that I occasionally see for plumbers where like there's a decal on the side, like like driver's side door and it looks like they're sitting on the toilet while they're driving. It's pretty good. It do, it definitely makes you do like a what, what? <laughs> like a double take. So, I mean, I'm seeing plumbing. Maybe some of you need to check your plumbing or, you know, hire a plumber. Um, if it's cold where you are, drip some water in your faucets. Um, uh, I, and, and then I see a little Alice in Wonderland here. So, uh, you know, it's surreal. So maybe going down the rabbit hole with something, but, 
um, I'm definitely getting a little bit of strategy. So what is that strategy? Maybe this, this is somebody else, you know, making a really big plan, trying to see their next couple moves or trying to foresee your next couple moves. I feel like I hear mystery. So I mean, even if somebody thinks they know what you're going to do, maybe they don't at all. Maybe it's, it's a surprise or maybe you don't know what somebody else is planning. Um, Ten of Pentacles. All right, we're going traditional with this. It does mean house, whole, a house, home, pets, family, money, your surroundings, your job, and building something that feels very secure. So maybe that's the ultimate plan, or that's what you can actually build with this person. I feel like if this is a couple, this is a couple that not only works well together, they support one another, um, they consider the family, and neighbors and i'm getting that they can like i'm getting building together i see like two people putting legos together so it's like maybe something starts as a plan but they can build a business or maybe their finances maybe it's investments together that can grow that can take off and fly <laughs> like even they can fly and build even when you're sitting on the toilet Oh, you too. I told you this is going to take us to weird places. All right. At the bottom of the deck is the Six of Cups. So, yeah. It's a soulmate situation. It could be dealing with children. It's something coming back around. What do I see here? It's nostalgia. Remembering the past. Um, calling up an old friend. You know, getting a random phone call from something, somebody, someone you were thinking about. Reconnecting or revising an old relationship or friendship. <sighs> All right, let's see. I do see a piano here. So something with a piano, guys, or keys. Um, I know this is a little bit weird, but sometimes when I think of how to translate um maybe astrology for somebody that doesn't know anything about the different houses or how placement of planets um creates dynamics you know like a um that uh create harmony or not um like a conjunction you know all that stuff and you try to explain it i sort of do it like this. This 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 is my explanation. I know it's really weird, but maybe it's useful or useful. Did I say useful twice. Uh, so take the wheel. You have the 12 houses, right? And now open up that wheel and lay it flat. It reminds me of a keyboard on the piano. And each of those houses is a note. So if you play a C and a C, maybe different octaves, it's going to be it's maybe different octaves, but still the same note. It's, you know, a con conjunction, I think. And um, if you play a C and then a D, you know, those two notes right next to each other, like get a little bit of it. They scratch each other a little bit. It's, there's a little disharmony there. But if you jump one note and go up to the third, all of a sudden it's, it's, it's a chord they go well together. So sometimes when you look at an astrology chart and you see those planets in the houses, I, I look at it as chords. It's not that it's a bad chord if they don't go together. Sometimes this that dissonance is important because that fiction creates, like I'm getting like aggravation that pushes change. But sometimes things are in harmony. So maybe you need to do your... Um, your birth chart, if you know, you know, the time you were born, I know some people don't, but you can still get the basics, even if you don't know that. Um, but I'm getting more like a, 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 a composite chart. So you take your chart and somebody else's chart and it kind of like blends the two together and makes a totally third chart that is the dynamic of that relationship between the two people. So maybe it's like, Sinistry or composite charts. That's what I got from looking at that piano up there. But there's also a waterfall coming from it. So 
there's two. There's one waterfall coming from the strings. So those, I'm getting like plucking. So that brings me to like a harp. Um, and it's running along the keys. I just heard uh, uh, Unthinkable by Alicia Keys. Something about get ready. I don't I can't get the words, but it's it's a really pretty song. Maybe there's something in that song that's meaningful. And then there's also a waterfall that is more like a little stream and that's actually coming from the keys. And these waterfalls are falling off onto this floating mountain. Hmm. I, when I see that mountain, I'm, I think I have the right show. I, I just jumped to the show Outlander and I, th I hope I have that show right. But there is like a part where he swims out to a weird rocky island in really, really cold ass water. And there's like a hidden treasure that was there from the ancestors or something. So Maybe there's something that was really hidden that's going to be like a treasure that you find. I told you this is going to take me into, you know, it's going to, it's going to get weird messages for you guys, but whatever, whatever comes through or however that bounces around, I, I just hope it's helpful. Um, I also see cup runneth over. I do see two cups filled and overflowing with water emotion and love and there's three other cups one so there's there's six cups one two three four five where is the sixth i guess it's over here the sixth cup is like part of the mountain oh no it's yeah um so you can't see what's in four of those cups but two are definitely overflowing um that's also a six weren't we getting six before in the beginning of the reading so maybe the sixth is important. Um, what else do I get from this? I get those weird pictures that you see where, you know, somebody sees one picture. It's so hard to see in this camera. It looks like a face on camera, but it's actually three bodies or two bodies are the face and one body is the hair. And then there's just two statues on the side. So it's when you look at something, it's like the ink blots. You can see one thing in a situation, but maybe somebody else just sees something totally different. Um, but I, I now see like two people discussing that difference. Like, they're like, what do you see? And you know, somebody describes what they see and they're like, oh, I do see that. But I was looking at that and seeing like an octopus and you know, somebody else was looking at it and they saw I'm, I'm getting like a horse, you know, like, same thing. Maybe some of you do surrealist art or you, uh, you know, somehow there's something deeper in there, even though, uh, yeah, I'm getting deeper, you know, something that you hide in art or you see that could be hidden, hidden in plain sight. Um, so something is coming back with this. We're going back, back to traditional out of, <laughs> Out of surreal land, back into the real one. All right, so there is structure coming into your world with the Ten of Pentacles. This is worth waiting for. Whatever it is, you can build mountains, you can build castles, you can build empires with it. You can leave a legacy behind. Um, it's feeling really stable in your world. And it's going to come through with you starting to enjoy these moments, your metamorphosis here, this change that's going on in, in your world. Maybe it's a relationship, you know? <sighs> Starting to really have fun. I'm looking at the blue avian. It just makes me think of learning how to fly. Starting to regain a little bit of freedom. Releasing ways that you did something in the past that you know didn't work. That's regaining your balance. What goes around comes around. So if you didn't feel right about how something that happened then you you can change it you can't change somebody else but you can be an example um and then something coming back around 
or perhaps meeting somebody that you just feel like you've always known, always known somehow. That's that like, even if you don't believe in past lives, it's just like your energies match. They just match. They just are attracted to each other. And it's, it's, it's like your souls recognize each other. You already know this person. Or maybe there's people. Maybe it's a soul family. It's finding your tribe for some of you. Some of you may just want to be single, but maybe this is really finding your tribe. You're starting maybe to do something or join a group of something you really love. And all of a sudden, like, these people get you or you get these people. Or like, oh, like, this is my, like, this is my, I'm getting like, these are my boys or my girls. Like, yeah, these are my peeps. <laughs> so I'm getting joining a group now. I also see a cello. What else do I see when I look back at this picture? It makes me think of um, petroglyphs. Or I see like the ancient statues in India or Egypt. Um, I don't know. I can see one where it's like a really big person and there's like little people down here. Hmm. So maybe it's getting on somebody's level or it's it's handling an energy that feels like it's really big, but maybe it is equal. All right. Just when you thought it was all weird, I have an even more strange tarot deck I've never used. So, I mean, we did get, I'm going to like show my generation by pulling this baby out, but back in the old 80s, there was this little thing called Garbage Pail Cards or the Garbage Pail Kids. And, you know, it was based off of like, it's like a raunchy version of the Cabbage Patch Kids, you know, and there were these weird cards. I guess people do like, uh, I don't know, what kind of cards do people use now? It's like, I, I wanted to say Spongebob, but I don't think that's it. Pokemon or something, you know. But this is the Garbage Pail Kids tarot deck. It's very strange. So... Let's clarify this reading with something even more strange than the last couple cards. Clarity 4. <laughs> the Collective. Sum up this reading. Oh, those got kind of stuck. And we have the, the Ace of Wands. This is this is a brand new start. This is a passion. This is having fun. This is lighting that fire. This is that spark of excitement that comes in your life to just move you forward. But you have to hit the gas. You have to make moves or it's going to fizzle away. This is the big old heart on of the universe, guys. I'm just going to start to say that because it <laughs> You know, it started weird, but that's how I see this card. I mean, here you have this hand coming out of the clouds out of nowhere and grabbing this, like, it's a stick. You know, it's a rod. It's growing, not just little leaves. It's growing like all these colorful flowers. Actually, it's that pink and it's pink and yellow energy again. What's in the background? Little rainbows little sparkles um so it's a beginning it's a new passionate beginning you don't know everything yet you know you can maybe have all that strategy and future plans and maybe that's what's coming or what you're working towards but it starts by fueling this fire continuing on make moves somebody could be making moves towards you what's at the bottom this is the nine of cups, whatever moves are making, whatever happens when you hit the gas and start a doing, start a doing, pursuing, getting that energy flowing and that like, you know, that feeling moving inside your body that just makes everything flow better is going to attract. It's going to attract the right things to you guys, because this is the nine of cups. This is what you want. It's not just about the, you know, the 10 of pentacles and the, you know, the stuff you work towards, it's also bringing you this abundant joy that you want. This is the good time. 
This is those moments that you are going to remember. So you have a balance here if you just get started. So the Nine of Cups, what is this? Oh my goodness. It's like a fly fairy. You see that? It's like kind of like a fly. Maybe a dragonfly, but it's also like a fairy, a fairy in a dress. <laughs> and there's all the cups underneath. And underneath that, I mean, it is the garbage pail kids, but there is just a heap of old garbage. Eggs and bones and meat, apples, eyeballs, fish bones, all kinds of weird stuff. A shoe. <laughs> there's a shoe. So maybe it starts by... Um, it could be like cleaning up your space, you know, getting rid of all that messy energy that has no place in your world anymore. It just brings you down. It feels like, like a heavy heap of like a garbage, you know? So it's getting rid of that energy that just feels like it's blocking your freedom, blocking that love, blocking those goals or those things that you want to work towards. So you could look at it that way, or it could be recognizing recognizing that all of that bullshit that you had to go through in situations that didn't work in other relationships within your family at your job in the past whatever maybe something you're going through right now all that bullshit all that crap is actually somehow that foundational energy that brought you that growth you're like the lotus growing out of the muck that grew your spiritual wings and they'll push you a little bit to get you out of that cocoon get you out of that cocoon light that fire so you're sprouting up this growth that is not just bringing abundance into your future world and this you know fun energy every day to feel alive perhaps a relationship or the right partnerships in your life that make you feel in love it's in love with yourself in love in love with another person but it's not you making each other happy it's being happy on your own and that being magnified into others and by others it, i mean somebody can make you happy but still the happiness starts within within you and maybe it's attracting something to come on back around the Nine of Cups is your wish come true, genie in a bottle. Knowing when you're satisfied, you know, having just enough, just enough to be happy. And what else do I get with this card? You are flying, you are flying out of the rubble. And a nine is almost completion. So I am going to end with that. You are on your way to that fulfillment you know it's it's that attraction energy that's coming into your world it starts with you just feeling attractive yourself recognizing how special how beautiful you are how unique you are there's nobody like you so and then you're just sparkling enough that the right circumstances opportunities people conversations just start working their way into your world or you find those right openings to add that little sparkle to somebody else's. I hope this reading was helpful. I love you so much and I'll see you soon.